<laughs> for any Magic yeah. the Gathering player out there, shout out to you. As that is interesting that that the orb is on the actual bear, or not on the bear. It's on yeah. the actual silver bear. That's so, I miss not like something a... you see very often. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what what his plan there is, or is there. That's not quite a sentence. Meanwhile, we have uh, three from Virtus Pro up top. We see a smoke from SK. It is going to find the Night Stalker next turn. He goes ahead and drops his ultimate, but he's not going to get there in time. Split Earth, as well as the ultimate from uh, SK, means that Shock Skill will go down. And I think they're going to try and turn this into that tier one up top, maybe? Yeah, they're going to try. Having a, you know, Diabolic Eating is going to be very helpful in that. It's going to cool down just a bit. But, uh, you know, from one to, uh, on a scale of one to Michael Jackson, how successful was uh, Night Stalker's first night? Is that appropriate? <laughs> <laughs> no? Alright, meanwhile, Tower is going to defend us. We see Crystal Maiden teleporting in. And uh, Virtus World backs off. As you collect your thoughts, I'm actually very curious. I mean, he got a lot of tower push down, but he also died a couple of times, so. I'm going to go with about a three. I don't think it was that successful, to be honest. We do see a Burrow on Epic Mad, though, and again, Crystal Maiden. Wow! They actually thought. Oh, okay, she goes down. <laughs> Dude, that's, <laughs> that's the worst part of Crystal Maiden's career. It's like, oh, I'm going to live. Oh my god, I'm going to live. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, it's like that, you, you feel like you've got it, then you don't. Uh, Sonic Wave got dropped from Blurry Brain, he thought for sure that was going to be enough, but Crystal Man actually had a little bit of HP, almost got healed up by the Enchantress, but managed to take it. Just one more attack from Queen of Pain, and down he went. Uh, meanwhile, in middle, the difference here is last game they had a Void, right? Right. And Void has a, a pretty natural escape ability, obviously, with his dodge, and of course he got Evasion and Chrono. Lifestealer, meanwhile, doesn't really have that that blind ability to just get away. He can't farm near as aggressively. He has to be a bit more cautious with where he goes, because despite him having rage to be able to run away, and his ultimate to jump in a creep, he doesn't really have a, I'm just going to blink away and escape. So Kuroki can't really be quite as aggressive about his farm. He's got to be a bit more cautious with it. So because of that, he's not quite as fat as the uh, Void was last game. Last game, we saw Void, at this point in the game, he was he was ahead of everybody else on the... Well. On the MTW side, right? He, he was he was struggling to get his battle fury. I think we pointed that out. And but as far as, as XP, as far yeah, as XP, goes, he's definitely ahead. And also, you got to keep in mind that Void was because of having that the leap ability or time walk. Excuse me, he could actually uh, uh, farm the lane here a lot more aggressively. Uh, this is actually one of the first few times that we see Kuroki in the lane, and be, of course, the jungling creep gives you a lot less EXP as well. So yeah. He has now completed that armlet, he's got treads as well, so he's got his core items, and it looks like in next is going to be actually a magic wand? Is that his choice? Yep, he has got himself got a magic wand, just in case. Uh, meanwhile, in middle, NS and Crystal Man going after Santa. Santa is going to survive, however, and they may get a rebuttal here. Effing Mad, I think you may be the target of choice, buddy. Uh-oh, Effing Strike Mad. So no slow. Shackle, shackle shot, shot mini stun, Burrow Strike up ahead here. Oh, force that from Cinder. Nicely played, nicely played. And the chase goes the other way. Shaska, by the way, teleported back to that Tier 1 tower. Again, we have NS, but they can't prepare with us this time. None of that <laughs> shenanigans. None of those sit there for 10 minutes and just buy time for our, our, uh, our next to continue farming. So... Uh, Virtus Pro losing another hero there. SK going down 10 to 10 now as the uh, game relatively still even though the XP actually if you look at the XP graph starting to pull back in the radiant favor just a little bit. Uh, it's about 500 still in dire but evening out a bit. Not really a whole lot of advantage there. Same with the gold. It's kind of slowly dipping down but staying relatively even at 2500 as well. And it looks like M2 is going to try and turn this into a Roshan which should give them um, a bit more ad advantage here. Uh, Effing Matt has got himself a boot bracer. Just a you know, dust of appearances. Obviously, he got that uh, kill with SK there. So keep keeping prepared. If anyone ever doubted the dire Roshan advantage, you're seeing it right here. If this was on the radiant side, you would never ever get the Rosh off like this. Look at the tier one tower still up. The tier two tower is still up, and because of those towers still up, MTW going to get the relatively safe Rosh. Meanwhile, Funzi on the top lane here, sitting at 3,600 gold. But Ooh, is he gonna get ganged right before it though? He's gonna oh. try and run away. Shadow Strike is gonna catch him. He's trying to phase away. He is gonna get some team support coming up here. We can see a TP up top. F yep, I think he's actually gonna be fine. He's gonna be able to get away in there. Maybe a rebuttal uh, gang uh, here. One hit in tango. Never way. seen that one before. Here comes Night Soccer during nighttime. Sunstrike that is gonna hit on Santa. Nicely played by Cinder. That is gonna be their mega kill. That is gonna give Funzy 3800 gold. Where are we gonna pick up the relic? I hope we do before he dies or something like that. Do you just farm for 13, the 1300, or do you push? It seems like they want to push. Yeah, let's die for uh, 17 seconds, which doesn't mean too much, but let's get that get some damage on the tower. Yeah, they run that. He runs that courier down there, goes ahead and picks up his relic. Now, I'd like to point out because Cinderin has managed to get a lot more XP this game because he's been farming a bit more. He's gone to 
and grab himself a point booster, which presumably is going to go for an Ag Scepter eventually. Uh, he doesn't necessarily need to finish it. Point boosters are a pretty cost-effective item just to pick up anyway, uh, but I presume it's going to be uh, an Ag Scepter eventually. So, you know, that's kind of by nature of him having more levels and just having more useful skills uh, at a much higher rate than last game. Also, because of he getting the kill through Sunstrike, he never leaves the lane. He gets the EXP of the Sunstrike kill. So that's pretty nice for him here. As, uh, you do see this slow siege. Bear tanking the tower like his bounce. And uh, it's going to bring down the tower very nicely if I'm just walking back and forth. Tower not going to get denied because that demolished plus sacred relic is no joke. And that is going to put uh, Funzy up to 700 gold. So he is just a little bit away from that Radiance. And do we have anything against that Radiance? I mean, we're talk we are we know Nyx is a very strong late game carry, but you could kite him easily with 4 staff. And you could definitely entangle him, uh, Rage or not Rage. So, I mean, is, is the right pick? W was was Life Stealer the right pick? Well, I mean, he's good against tanky carries, and Syllabar is certainly a tanky style carry. So he's going to get stronger as he goes, but he's actually only got one level of... of well, he's got open wounds rather than one level. Oh, actually, Sinner's going to find Kuroki here. He's going to probably drop a cold stab and just burn down that armor with the Forge Spirits here. Um, and actually, Kuroki's going to go ahead and turn around and just go ahead and wail on the, the uh, Forge Spirits itself. going to force a rage, and it is going to be popped here, and looks like... Sinner's just going to bait him and then force staff himself down the tower, and NS is too far away to get anything. Meanwhile, Queen of Pain picks up a region rune on top. Yeah, Queen of Pain haven't checked her farm for a bit, uh, so uh, she is going to be going for the Axe Scepter to give her team a little bit more AoE. None of that in Sonic Wave and Crystal made it survive for one more hit thing. Uh, yeah, mid Tower yeah. is going to get destroyed here. I think MTW has uh, got enough out of this to Mid Tower. As I say that, they are defending this very valiant deny attempt. Not going to be attempted on Syndrin. Burrow Strike and Shadow Shot. Ultimate going to be dropping Syndrin. His four staff stone cooldown just barely gets it off. He is going to be eventually going down. He goes in Viz. Nicely played, but wow, nicely on the Cosmic Finale. AoE damage up the Wazoo. Kuroki in a little bit of trouble. He is going to be going down. Big Sonic Way coming here. Gets one kill against the Windrun though. Oh, silence on the Sanking. Sanking will be going down. Shaska with no HP. Going to get the kill off. We talked about the chasing power of the Radiant. But Dire not too shabby themselves. No, uh, no entangle or proc hits here. As Wimmer was proc. No, Wimmer was proc. If, if it wasn't, definitely we're gonna see a, uh, you know, first a proc. Uh, Syndrome buys back. A very questionable choice in my opinion. Uh, we we see Pretty aggressive. Yeah, yeah, we saw MTW. They're definitely uh, very trigger happy on that buyback. Not rage, tactical, and they're gonna turn that into a push. Hopefully. Well, they're going to try and catch the blow your brain here. Now, we talked about Queen of Pain going for that Ag Scepter. What that does is it gives them a lot of pushing power. I mean, you know, you get BOTs. Obviously, he's gone for treads. You can move around the map and push down. You just throw a, throw it on a, a creep wave pretty easily because when you get that, that Ag Scepter, it obviously lowers the cooldown as well as increasing the damage. So it allows them to just spam that a lot more than you normally would see. And because of that, you know, it gives them a, a bit more anti-push power, which is really what they're looking for, is they just want to get that next bat as they can. Sinner's going to get initiated on here. Bear does, of course, one-hit entangle on Blow Your Brain. Why wouldn't it? And uh, he's going to be able to get away. They are going to go ahead and burrow and try and catch the uh, bear, and I think they're actually going to get it. Yep, yep, quick 100 gold there. And it's actually on cooldown, 28 seconds, so no bear for just a little while here. Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest issues of uh, Silver is uh, how easily it will be brought down past the 40 minute, I guess 30 minute mark as well. And uh, you're you're working with a very limited cooldown. You're putting what ten thousand gold an item, and you know once you kill it, it's not gonna be there. So yeah, yeah. Scandal. He's got himself a couple bracers here, trying to get that luscious tank as possible. NS just the boots and the bracer. Really not a whole lot of him at all. Groki, of course, does have that uh, armlet. It's actually gonna go for a desolator. We see double mithril hammers here. Um, not not an uncommon build. Back in the day, you used to see desolator all the time. Nix. It was uh, you know obviously the armor plus that feast is just so insane. Uh, Santa meanwhile, bottom just of a mech looks like a four staff is going to be the other choice for him. Meanwhile, on the dire side, Siaska's got a BKB. Of course, he still has that Aegis. They picked that up a little bit ago. Not a whole lot of aggression on the back of it. He did get take a bunch of damage in that last battle, but didn't actually go down. Uh, I think Mad, meanwhile, just a bunch of wards. Going to go ahead and drop one here. Uh, Sindarin got the four staff. Of course, the point booster. A full 2k. Interesting to see if he goes ahead and finishes that Aegis or if he goes for any kind of uh, hex before then. Aga, you mean? If you oh, yeah, finish an Aegis, that's what we... Yeah, pretty yeah. Bala. Way back in the day, you yeah, still Way back that. in the day, yep. It was what? The old, the old days of the rapier ages. It was a was hood a... and a, a play mail, I think, and then you buy the recipe. I, I don't, I don't remember the ah. actual. I do not remember it at all. That's been forever. Yep. But anyway, MTW is going to gather here. It looks like we're going to see a five-man double forward spear or bear push uh, on the top uh, tier two tower. <laughs> NS is going. <laughs> yeah, okay. NS. I'm not sure about that one. He's like charging in. NS might be. Yeah, and it's going to go down here. There's a BKB on Shaska, so he doesn't care. Nicely aim on the sun strike. 
That was not the best play I've seen ever NS ever done. And, Look, uh, NS is a fantastic player, but that was a bad idea. <laughs> he just decided to walk up there and go for a sandstorm anti push. That's what he, that's what his plan was. I'm gonna anti push with sandstorm. All right. That didn't quite work out. Nope, it did not here. And MTW feeling more confident this time. They have the beer, they have the BKB. They could just walk up the ramp. But they will uh, still Immediately see we see the uh, the Radiance demolished bear. We're gonna go ahead and A click that tower. As, as in game one, we they didn't really have the ability to do this. They didn't have anything to just run up there. And of course they still have that Aegis on MT on Saska, which is I think one of the reasons they're doing this is because they can be a bit more aggressive with an S. I feel like all five heroes should be up on that ramp. Why? Why are they playing yeah, a little bit more defensive? I think they. I think they were maybe a little bit worried about an epicenter from NS as he was alive. Um, they didn't want to get you know five man five man ultimate. As we see a pause here from VP. Yeah, but look, look at NS right here as we see uh, his his item as we see a pause. Like he he just had boots and a bracer. He's so far away from anything. It, it's rough on him. Yeah, and that level, he's actually only got level 1 ultimate, too. It's not even a level 2 ultimate, yeah, so it's not so. a whole lot to even fear. Um, Nexus doesn't have the Desolator just yet. There is an Ag Scepter on Blow Your Brain, of course, but that's about it. Um, yeah, I think they could have gone for that there. Is this going to be Is this gonna be the mistake that costs MTW? Or are they going to, is this, you know, we saw in Game 1 the, the non-aggressiveness um, at about the 22-minute mark. Are we going to, is this going to happen again here? I, I think... With that Aegis on the Night Stalker, this is a good time to go. Yeah, per I don't want to call it a mistake. They're still so far ahead. P perhaps they won that last tier too. Perhaps they're waiting for a key item. Let's quickly check on that. Um, yeah, I don't think they're close to anything. Perhaps Cinderin is waiting for that Axe Editor, but... He's not quite leveled up enough to really make yeah. it super effective. I mean, he's level 14. He's got high Exhort. He's gone to. He's, he's been maxing Exhort here. Just to still the one point in Wex. Uh, he's going to max Wex after that, would be my assumption. That's typically what you see. But, I mean, the Axe Scepter, at this point, isn't really doing a whole lot. It's just going to allow him to cast a couple other random skills that, while they're not super effective, they're going to be they're going to be more spells, obviously. But it's, yeah, I, I think they could have probably gone for that. I don't know. Oh, perhaps they're waiting for the cooldown on the beer as well. As, no, it is. Like, no, I don't even know what they're waiting for, but... Uh, they did not push, and that is the end of the story. By the way, if you're just joining on the stream, this is Virtus Pro versus MTW for the West Qualifier. This is game number two. Virtus Pro took game number one to make sure that we're following in. We don't have Starboard available because uh, Dota 2 has added these uh, new fancy icons, and that doesn't compat with uh, Starboard. So I have to fill you guys in. We are in game two. Virtus Pro wins game number one. For the 300 viewers out there, that six minutes ago, the 300 viewers out there, you guys, a box. Yeah, yeah. Big shout out to all our, uh, to all the uh, viewers and anybody watching, perhaps on uh, on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. Props to you kids as well. Um, anyway, we're gonna have a, a couple minute pause here as NS uh, asks for a, a pause. I'm actually gonna bail for just a sec. I, I will be right back. No problem. Uh, let's use this time and quickly check how we are doing in terms of the. Uh... Sorry, in terms of the gold department on the Radiant side. The Shrek has nothing. Uh, last time we saw an 18-minute blood zone. This game we have, you know, nothing. KKY is going to be working on the Desolator. Desolator is basically done at this point. The recipe, I think, only costs like 700 gold, if I'm right. Uh, if, if I didn't uh, mistake in that one. Uh, Queen of Pain has the Acceptor as well as 1,600 gold. But not really item, not any good item to really speak for. We have four staff almost done, just 200 go away, and a mecha and a face boot. Uh, Santa, I mean, had an okay lane against the Silibre up top, so not the uh, too surprising when it comes to item, but the goal lead is really in the favor uh, of the Dire. And when I say really in the favor, I'm actually very shocked that's only 400 gold, or 4,000 gold. As they're up in terms of tower, they got the Roshan. So I gotta just say that the Radiant is out farming. And let's check out the individual farm. 132 on Blower Brain, 129 on Kuroki, Kalahimana. Some of these are neutral, so not worth as much. Only 109 on Cinderin, and only 160 on Funzi, some of them being neutral as well. Yeah, so Radiant's fairly f out farming the Dire. Yeah, but the Dire does have all those towers, which is uh, why they have that gold advantage right now. Um, it's about, what, 4K? Just a little over 4K here. XP, about 4.5, almost 5K there. Um, so still, still advantageous for the Dire, but yeah. Yeah, 4k when you're up two towers and Roshan, I, I feel like it should be a little bit more. Yeah, but I mean, they, they've been kind of trading some of their farm in order to try and get... It, it's a very similar game to game one, where MTW, or, uh, Virtus Pro had what they would you would consider the hard carry. Um, you know, last game it was Darkseer, this game it's Nakes. Nakes not quite Dark... or 
um, not Dark Seer, <laughs> Void, Dark Terror, Void. Um, not quite as powerful. I, I feel like Nyx isn't quite as strong as Void uh, as late game potential, but he's got a bit more mid game ability. Uh, NS has apparently returned. We're sitting, we're asking for a go, and it looks like MTW is is ready and willing and able as well. So we're gonna go ahead and continue this up here. Now the question for me is how long until MDW go ahead and go for this because I don't think they want to wait too long. They do have a pretty powerful late game hero in Silibear. Silibear is capable certainly of carrying against um, against the Nakes later on, but I don't think they want to wait too long. They don't want to start trading those towers back and have that gold advantage you know disappear in any way. What do you what do you think it, uh, the choice is to put the face on the hero and the orb on the hero and and not on the bear like. I think having the plus damage and since you're, you know, getting a 40% bonus on Demolish on Tower is necessary, I feel. But he's not doing it. He's like, you know what, I, I want to keep my hero safe, which is, I mean, a legitimate choice. So Yeah, well, I mean, I'm sure he's going to buy another set of phases and put well, those he, on the pair next anyway. Oh, I don't know, he, he went for a blast on his hero, so. I, I, mean, I think he's done with the bear. Hmm. I don't know. If, if that's if, if he's not going to put it on there, that's, that's kind of... Interesting. Now, once they actually go for pushes, they're not really going to necessarily need uh, a phase, bunch of chase yeah. ability, which the phase gives. Though it does, again, it does give some decent siege damage. I'm more than the fact that Orb of Venom is nowhere near the bear. Uh, that's a little bit more, because Orb is, it, it really only gives the slow for the attack, and that's really entirely about the bear chase. I mean, there's no way the Silibear himself needs the Orb. I guess right? he just, like, again, he doesn't give a damn about chasing. This is more about sieging, so... Uh, but again, no yeah, reason not I, to have it on there. It's just yeah, any exactly. extra. So. You don't gain anything by having it on the on the Silibear himself. So, uh, yeah, I think he should probably move it to the bear, but we'll see. Uh, we or well, we're not going to see. Just, he's ch clearly chosen not to do so. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't know what that is. I'd actually like to talk to him and see what what his reasoning is. Uh, perhaps we're making a big deal out of nothing. Perhaps he just left it there since minute like ten yeah. and forgot maybe, about maybe it. Maybe he's yeah. like, I don't, I don't care about it. Well, yeah. I have no whatever. All right, here comes Team Fight backing out as we see a BKB being used. They're gonna go on Santa. No, scaring away two hero. Here comes Nyx focusing on Cinder. Nice four staff. Al Cinder barely survives. He's gonna be fine. Nice healing here. And KKY getting focus in. No, he is in someone's body. He's in a creep here. Crystal Maiden dropping off a big ultimate. Santa's gonna go down. Great start of a team fight here as we have blow your brain in big trouble. He is gonna go down. So well, the next creep though, now coming back out, he's gonna try to keep out Entango, Entango, no only Entango, GG go next. Wow, quick oh. GG's. Yeah, well, NCW, I mean, after they took that one, it was pretty obvious, I think, for everybody on Virtus Pro that they were about to lose all their base. I mean, they, they're not gonna go fin this, so that's why they called it GG and went ahead and left. So, MCW very quickly, 27 minutes, uh, taking game two here and evening this series back up as we're. Uh, Heading into the uh, the final deciding game for the uh, first round of the West Qualifiers for the International. Yeah, uh, MTW looking a lot stronger. I feel like uh, this is the kind of pick they need, and you need something like a Pugna, they need something like a Silver or a, a Panda, whatever that might be, to give me a hero that lets them walk uphill, because they uh, generally pick heroes that concentrate really push and really is lackluster on the other department. But game two now goes to MTW after that uh, short pause in the middle. And we're going to go to game number three. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back. 